A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. You have also forgotten the exhortation addressed to you as children. My son, do not disdain the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when reproved by him. For whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. He scourges every son he acknowledges. Endure your trials as discipline. God treats you as his sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? At the time, all discipline seems a cause not for joy but for pain. Yet later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for that holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one be deprived of the grace of God, that no bitter root spring up and cause trouble through which many may become defiled. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. But the kindness of the Lord is from eternity to eternity toward those who fear him, and his justice toward children's children among those who keep his covenant. The Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. <clears throat> alleluia, 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 alleluia. <clears throat> My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus departed from there and came to his native place, accompanied by his disciples, when the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished. They said, where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds were wrought by his hands? Is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his native place and among his own kin and in his own house. So he was not able to perform any mighty deeds there, apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Today in Hebrews, we get to this section in chapter 12, which is such a powerful section for us 
revealing the Father's heart to you and me. That he treats us as sons. And because he treats us as sons, as children, as those in his family, he disciplines. There's a fundamental difference between your children and the neighbor's children. Um, when they come over your house, they might get a little correction, but your investment is not into the neighbor's children. You don't go over there and try and sort them out and organize their chores and check on their lawn. and that's, They're not your kids. Your own children are the ones that you pour the time and effort and energy because you love them. And Scripture is reminding us today that we are the children of God. We are his sons. And so he disciplines us specifically because he loves us. And I think about my own father when I was young. Sixth grade, seventh grade, I had my first paper route. Now when I had my paper route, it was an early morning paper route. You had to be done by 6.30 a.m. And I lived about a mile and a half from my paper route. And it was a rather large paper route as far as they went in the area, about you know, 150 papers or so. So when I began to have this paper route job, my dad would get up with me every morning and help me fold the papers and help me load the bike and would follow me in the car all the way through the route. And the first day I fell over into a rose bush and couldn't get out because I was so small and the bike was so big and my dad was there to help me out of the rose bush, get me back on the bike. There were many days like that where the bike was heavier than I was, had strength to lift. But he went with me day in and day out until I learned what to do and how to do it. And this is the image of God the Father today. And we are invited, what does it say? At all times, discipline seems a cause not for joy, but for pain. I never liked getting up at 5 o'clock. I never liked it. But later, it brings the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who are trained by it. To those who are trained by it. So I was blessed by the investment of my father to be with me day in and day out, that I could be trained for this physical discipline, having a job in junior high. And God the Father is doing the same with us, walking with us, to discipline not because he's angry and upset, but to train us for the spiritual battle in which we are engaged. And we see that in the gospel. Jesus in his hometown, and the people weren't inspired by the work of God. They were put off. They were, they were angry. It says they took offense at him. And it says Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. So may that not be us today. As the Lord is bringing his correction to me, to you, his discipline. May we be trained by it, and may it lead us to be people of faith that respond to what the Lord is drawing us to on this day. Amen?